Welcome to the Flourishing Founders Podcast, where I interview inspiring Canadian entrepreneurs about the highs and lows of taking the leap of faith and starting their own business. My name is Ashley Deering. I'm the owner of Deering Media, a Fredericton, New Brunswick-based digital marketing agency. Let's jump into the episode. Good morning, happy Sunday. Today is episode six of the Flourishing Founders podcast. We are at episode six already. I've been lining up some, ooh, yay, that looks so faster. We're getting good at this. I'm sorry, <laughs> join this quickly. No, it's perfect. Good morning, Emily. Okay, well there, you'll be here for my introduction. Today is episode six of this podcast. It's so crazy, Gab, that I'm already here, and especially since we kicked it off with you. So we're like flying through the season. So Gabrielle is here with me today. She is the owner of Serotonin Artworks, which is a multifaceted artistic business. <laughs> we'll dive deep into what that means in a moment. And she's also studying for her second degree at UMB right now within the science realm of things. So it's really interesting. We're going to have a conversation about her love of science and arts and how they combine. She has spent years in a lab environment, um, but she's been working in customer service her whole life. She she recently discovered, since reconnecting with me, that she wasn't super happy in her life and needed to shake things up. And throughout a very long conversation of us catching up together, she was able to discover that she needed to start pursuing some of her own passions again, which is art. So I'm really excited to have you on, Gab, not just because I love you and I've known you for a long time, but I actually think that you have a really beautiful, inspiring story. And I think that there's some people that might be watching this today that feel stuck or in or in a rut. And you were able to be pretty ballsy this year during a pandemic and decided to basically shake up your whole friggin' life <laughs> and pursue what you love so that's what we're going to dive in today and I think it's going to be a great episode so good morning how are you morning thank you for having me I'm doing great thank you for coming I love that you have a Christmas tree I felt like that was the best <laughs> and the dogs and everything too I'm like loving your background <laughs> it's oh, very you, you. <laughs> that's my my pup I'm just trying to <laughs> shut down my computer here that's okay. Technical difficulties. Ah. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. It's really sweet. Oh, Emily says she's going to feel like, yeah, like I feel like you and Emily need to meet. I want to connect you guys. I feel like you guys have a similar vibe. You guys would like, and you both like me. So I'm, like, <laughs> I'm kidding. I know. You both like me. No. <laughs> okay. Let's dive into it, my love. You originally went to university to obtain a degree in chemistry, and then you went off to work in a laboratory performing all sorts of tests and cool things, but you left that job earlier this year to jump fully back into your art. I want to talk to you about reconnecting with your passions. What was that experience like? How scary was it to leave your job? Like, talk us through that side of things. I, think, like, I haven't talked about it in, since I left the job, which is hilarious because I just... I basically worked three years in a chemical lab, like you said, and I ran away and never looked back. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's a whole other world for me to think about, but I just, I knew I wasn't happy in that setting. Um, I don't know if I share a lot of common interests with a lot of people with science. Um, if you are in science, if you did start this way, my parents were very adamant about pursuing the sciences, you know, science was that realm to go through, to go, go into that world, which I did, and did. I loved chemistry, I started it really early on, um, but to do so, I left behind a lot of my creation, I left behind my love of art, I used to go into the art lab, for lunches in high school every day like not much else was about the science besides art and anyway so when I was working in the lab I just kind of brushed past that I didn't really have many drives many hobbies but then I started watching Marvel and while I was watching Marvel I just had a little bit of a inspiration and I started doodling in my sketchbook and then I started painting and I kept asking other people, like, give me more, give me more. <laughs> like, give me more. <laughs> I was like, I just need to get this out. I need to do something. And that's when I started feeling a little bit more about myself. And um, 
as you said, we met uh, up again later in life. And I think we met for like eight hours, nine hours that day <laughs> to talk about everything. There was a lot to catch up on. <laughs> there was just years of stuff that we both needed to catch up on. And honestly, with your help, I realized, and we were just talking jokingly about <laughs> running away and doing art. And, you know, I was like, that's, I can't do that. I can't do that. I have a career. I, you know, corporate life. Like, <laughs> like you, you don't get it. Life. Yeah. Once you start making money, it's hard not to just <laughs> run from that. And honestly, I went home and I was around my house and I was just like, yeah, I need to do it. I don't know that. I guess that's a really cheesy story on how I found my passion to go through this, but yeah. I love that I'm a part of it. That's so cute. I don't want to take any credit, though, because this truly has been something that's been a part of your life forever. Like, you just started reconnecting. It's not even reconnecting with your passions. It was reconnecting with yourself. You felt like you had lost yourself throughout this experience, and, like, you slowly had to start trying to find pieces of you again to, like, put yourself back together. So, like, that's really cool. And that leads me into my next question. <laughs> So Gab, I have a very distinct memory of your childhood bedroom because it was so cool. She had like this red, white, and black bedroom. And it was like my dream bedroom. I was always so, like, look at the colors I'm wearing today. I was super jealous. <laughs> she had murals up on her walls. Like this girl has always, always, always had a really creative a flair for things. And it's crazy to me to fast forward, you know, 10 years later in the future. And here you are creating murals for local businesses in the area, my clients, like, it's so cool to be able to see you at this level. So thinking back to that time when you were painting on the walls of your bedroom, like, could you have ever seen yourself or imagined yourself in like this role today? It's so funny that you bring that up. My mom actually sent me a picture of like my first mural, um, like recently this week. And, <laughs> and she leave on like business trips not often or anything but when she'd come home she would normally walk into her house with my door locked and music just blaring and you know she, she does the knock like hi honey I'm home like are you okay I'm like get up yeah. <laughs> and she comes into this dragon on the wall <laughs> like with Chinese lettering and Oh my gosh, it was neon. There was a lot of greens that I remember. And it, it's just, it's really funny to think that, yes, this is what I'm doing now. And I love it because we used to joke all the time. Like, I remember my grandmother even saying, if you want to make money in life, like, that's what you should do. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, I never knew there was a market for this stuff. And it's great. Like, it's so much fun. It's so, so nice to go into somebody's place and have just a blank wall and, roll paint up on there. I don't know. There's something about a big canvas and a blank wall. Just give me paint and I'll do it. I love it. I love that so much. That makes me so happy. And then you start doing murals in your own living room at your condo. Like you just don't stop. <laughs> Are you working on one now that we can talk about? Um, well, I just finished up at Surface. This yeah, time. let's touch on that experience. So Surface Float, for those who don't know, is, I don't even know how to explain it. So it's like a local spa, but the whole like idea around it is that you float with, it's like bath salts, Epsom salts. I'm pretty sure it's Epsom salts. And so it's a thermal rejuvenation, detox um, therapy. Um, they also offer a lot more. They offer yoga. They offer um is these pools saunas um so what i did was i experienced the pod for myself um just to get a sense of like what do they want and honestly it is the most relaxing peaceful moment of your life You're, so you you lay in a tub uh half of water and you float on that surface for 80 minutes you have to shower all your oils off and get them all off i highly recommend that that treatment for yourself. If you're looking to just get away for 80 minutes and just shut your mind off, highly, highly recommend them. They have a great staff. Um, so the pod, you know, there's, there's lights just shining everywhere in the pod and it just turns different colors. It's really relaxing, but I shouldn't say it like that. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna have a seizure. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, I loved it. I was on a trip, like, but. <laughs> 
<laughs> just, just so those know, I've tried it once. And if you're like super claustrophobic like I am, there's pools that you can lay in where there's no covering. That was my jam. I'm actually going to try a pool this week uh, just to get a feel for both of them because I am a past swimmer and I felt like maybe some would be a little claustrophobic in a pod. Yeah. It's still, it's phenomenal. But you just, you feel like you're floating in outer space. Like that's, that is all I can ever even describe that experience as. So, Which ties into the mural. So tell us what the mural was. They have a little logo. Uh, they have a mascot of a otter and he's so cute. <laughs> like, so cute. <laughs> um, so they asked me to paint a mural of the otter floating in water, but outer space in the background. So the whole background is a big pink purple galaxy feel and then the little otter just right on top. And he's that's so great. Like, oh, it, it looks so good. Go see it. Seriously. Go see it. It really is beautiful. Go check it out on her profile after this. Oh, I love that so much. So coming into the next one, how has reconnecting with your love of art impacted your life recently? So let's put it into perspective. When did we dive into this? Was it August? Oh, my July? God. June. June? Yeah, like early summer. So like you've had like six months of going at this now, like going after your passions and stuff like that. Like how has that changed you as a person, Gab? I'm just so much happier. Like anytime that I feel stressed, anytime that I feel, you know, just down and I feel like I need to be productive, it's so nice to know that that's my work. And it's so relaxing and I love doing it. I love the photos that people send me and ask me to recreate for them. I love the memories. I've been working on portraits. I've been working on just paintings from where we lived. Um, anything. It's it's so relaxing, and I don't know. It it means something. You like to work for something that you truly believe in and makes you happy. And recommend to go find it. <laughs> oh no, I love that. And like just knowing you for as long as I have, like I I feel like. I always say that you're my sister, you're not a friend. It's like a type of person that I can go without seeing for a couple months and then come back into my life and we catch right up. Like, I always love that about you. So, like, genuinely, like, seeing you right now, like, that's the happiest I've seen you in a long time. So, I'm proud of you. I'm very happy to see you on this journey. That's so sweet. So, let's get into, okay. I know, we're gonna, like, I brought tissues because I was like, Gab's gonna make me cry. <laughs> So you started your business this year. What steps did you take to get it off the ground? So how did you start making money? How did you find clients? Talk to us about that. Yeah, so um, I took a little bit of the summer off for myself. And as I was going through that process, I was really building um, just my skill set. Like I haven't touched a paintbrush in years. So I think that was the biggest part to kick off. And then, you know, talking to you, it just made me realize like, all the things that I needed to do. And you were always so great if I could go sit on your couch and ask you so many questions about this whole world. Because there's just... <laughs> so <laughs> practice, get an Ashley. <laughs> like just social media alone. There's like five different apps that I had to download just to make sure my profile. Oh, I'm getting used to it. It's a lot. <laughs> but, so prior to going back to school, I had to get that up and running really, really quickly. So, um, you know, I had to do a lot of just getting my painting out there. So, you know, we worked on getting a lot of my collection starting and even though that was hard to get going, but then we really focused in on that mural setting. And so Ashley really, really helped me tremendously with this. Um, she was working with Beauty Prodigy, still is, and they had blank walls everywhere. And <laughs> Ashley basically said, hey, if you want to start, this is the perfect area. And I worked so hard at building those promos and demos and everything that I sent them and they gave me the best chance of my life um and yeah that's how I started my business and you can also check those out on my profile and they're but beautiful they're so on brand so like the part of beauty prodigies we did a full rebrand this year but they also renovated a whole like office space into a spa so like it was blank like and that was it like it really needed a pop like that was the missing touch and gab still to this day like clients walk in and they're like wow like i love those murals it's the perfect little pop of color here like you did such a great job there so i'm glad that was your like starting point i'm glad like sam agreed and like it's sam from beauty prodigy and like took that on too and like is honestly walking into a place and knowing that everybody just feels at home after I paint oh that's so nice to hear right you're doing a great job 
Okay, I love that you named your business Serotonin Artworks. Can you explain to the viewers or the listeners, depending on how you're consuming this piece of media, how you came up with that name and like what it means to you? Yeah, um, so as a chemist, um, I felt like kind of pushing away that side of me was a little bit wrong for some reason. So <laughs> I you know, I thought really hard on this. Um, I was going through so many names. I think it took two months to come up with the same, but I was super stoked about artworks for some reason because DreamWorks and I did some sort of mental, yeah. And <laughs> so it was just that word that really tied in my life. And serotonin um, is the most common factor that you are prescribed for. Um, it regulates your mood along with other things it's one of the most important inhibitors in our life and I just felt like going through a lot of what I did to get to where I am today I needed a little bit of a piece to remind me to boost my levels of serotonin and I just wanted to for everybody to experience that I wanted somebody to walk into their place and just say oh a little bit of serotonin today you know <laughs> Yeah, I love that. It's a little like boost to the system, right? Like I like like what you just said about Beauty Prodigy. They walk in there and they see those murals and like, oh gosh, like this is really beautiful. It makes me feel peaceful and at home and stuff like that. Like artwork has so much potential, like so much power behind it for feelings. Absolutely, absolutely. It just it can change a whole perspective of somebody's life. Like. I walked into my condo and I looked around it was empty walls everywhere. So I, you know, I just start picking it back up. Oh my God, technical difficulties. Okay, I see you. <laughs> and just the more that you build onto that sense and, you know, get your feelings, get your colors out. And it's just so much fun to pick those out and be your dream come to life. It just, it makes you happy to do so, so. Yeah, I like that you do it in a collaborative way too. Like Beauty Prodigy, it was like, okay, well, what are the elements and the colors? And we literally gave you our color scheme and we were like, okay, you're like, go wild. <laughs> and like surface float, like you went in and like actually experienced what it was like to be that little otter, right? <laughs> and brought that to life for them. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it, that's what I love doing. I truly love connecting with the businesses themselves. I want to hear their story. I want to know what they do. I want to bring and tie that into that aspect. You know, I don't want to go in there and just give you something that is not on your brand or not going to make you wake up and want to go and see that at work every day. You know what I mean? So yeah. And you put a lot of effort into that. Like you taught yourself how to use like a digital illustrator thing this year with that out of nowhere. So you could get those beauty prodigy uh, mock-ups done and everything like that. But I really like that you do that. You offer a couple different designs, different perspectives, different elements from their branding and stuff and really create something true to them. So uh, you're an incredible muralist. I love, uh, <laughs> I love your work so far. Yeah. Okay, you are currently in university. She's at UMB again. She's getting her second science degree. This time around, it's in psychology. How do you see your love of sciences and your passion of art combining together in the future for your business? <laughs> uh, well, without giving it all away. <laughs> my entire master plan. Um, but it has been cool to go back to school, uh, especially in this route, because I chose psychology for a little bit of a selfish purpose. I wanted to learn a lot of how my own brain ticks and best decision I've ever made in my life. Um, but knowing how much just even a hobby can help you, a relaxing hobby can help you. I would love to see my life just tie in a little bit more um, art wise, art therapy. Um, I'm currently going in the direction of clinical psychology. So I would love to prescribe maybe your the session that you just get your stuff out. I don't know how else to say it without giving everything away, but <laughs> you do see it like colliding though. Like there's a lot of like healing. There's a lot that art can just pull out in somebody. It's very peaceful. So like the fact that you're going to be able to someday combine the two of those, I think is really incredible. And I think it's such a cool, like what an interesting perspective to come at something like that with, right? You have a background in chemistry and psychology and you're going to combine them like, cool. <laughs> She's a smart lady. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to 
fake boat. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This one, I thought of this morning and I was like, oh my God, I have to ask her this. So your number one fan in high school was our art teacher, Mr. Dallin. He loved Gabrielle, but he hated me because I was a bad <laughs> influence. <laughs> But he was obsessed with Gab. He thought so highly of you. He instantly recognized your talent. And he was always somebody that really supported you, especially through those times. What do you think he would say to you 10 years later with this business? If he saw you creating today and making money from your art, like, what do you think Mr. Dallas would say to you? I don't know if he's alive or not. <laughs> I hope he is. <laughs> this is a me saying. Oh, I actually don't know. Uh, I actually don't know. I've been trying to see him for years. Um, anytime I pop down to KB, I never get a chance to say hi. But if he is, you know, still around, and he was just—he was tremendous for me. He was—he was always building me, always making sure that I was going into the path that I should have been. He never. I think. I think if he would see me now, the fact that I left science, I think he would laugh in my face and probably say, well, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't always wanted you to pursue art. Literally, yeah. No, I remember like scouts coming to the schools and him just pulling me aside and being like, if you want to talk to them, like tell me. And you know, at that point, science was a huge part of my life. And I really let go of that to go into chemistry. So yeah. I would definitely see him saying he told me so. so. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I yeah. So I've been doing a lot of reflecting lately about our high school days. And I think it's because I went to FHS and I was in those classes talking to high school students. So I was literally in there talking to 16, 17 year olds. And it really made me think about us and what we were going through at that time. And I think you and I especially bonded during that time because we were both going through our own shit and just kind of had each other's back and stuff like that. And I'm wondering, and I think you've asked me this before too, but I'm wondering what you would say to 16 year old Gabrielle, who's going going through it, who doesn't, you know, see the light of day, you have so much more knowledge and wisdom and experience from, you know, just fucking age and time and stuff like that. So like, what would you say to that version of you? I, if I were to ever, uh, oh, that's such a big question, because you look back on your life and you say, like, do I regret anything? I don't. So it doesn't matter where my life is now. It doesn't matter how 180 it is. And it doesn't matter what I've gone through, who I've met along the way. And I've said this to you many times. I, I take a lot of moments in my life and people in my life as lessons. And I know that's an unpopular opinion <laughs> to view things as, but the reason why I do it is because every experience I've ever gone through, I've always just wanted to grow. If I knew I said something wrong, if I knew I did something wrong, I wanted to fix that and vice versa. If I did something great, if I, you know, if I felt happy in a moment, I wanted to keep that going. So if I were to look back at, a, at me, a 16 year old, I would just say, go through life, but grow. Just hold on to every little aspect and hold on to every experience that you're about to go through and just have fun with it. Yeah. Hurry. Yeah. And, that's a that's just a big big theme in my life right now is it's like stop taking things so seriously you know the, what happens today the people that are in your life today might not be the people down the road like you know prioritize yourself love yourself and like just experience things as they come and don't put I used to put so much pressure on myself to like have everything figured out or like by 25 I thought I'd be married and have a family like all those kind of like weird things that you get in your head like it's just letting go of all that all the expectations and stuff and like, I was thinking about this too, because I figured you were gonna ask me this question. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking back to like when we were in high school and how different everything has changed, you know? And thinking about what were the first lessons that we even learned in first year and second year kindergarten, blah, blah, blah. And I remember them saying like, don't be an artist, an artist is, uh, wage is this much, but then go be a doctor because this doctor and there's all already right there a lot of problems with that system. 
there is not you you really do need to encourage the young minds to just do what they need to do but encourage them in an appropriate way to build their own life to to motivate them to motivate them to be better for their own selves so i just i that's another thing i would say to teens there's so many possibilities in this world and you just really need to like do them <laughs> So it, that's literally the core message of what I try to like teach to those high school kids and stuff like that is that, you know, try everything that interests you. Like you're not, you don't need to know what your passion is. You're not going to pull it out of a hat. You, you know, you might have something when you're a kid and come back to it years later. Like it's just something that you just need to be like open to life, open to new experiences, open to meeting new people. Like you never know what's going to happen. But like, I think it's really like, depression and stuff too. Like when you shut yourself down, you shut yourself down to the world too. Like things stop moving, things stop, you know, rolling for you and moving forward. So like, I think that was a big thing that both of us had to like work on and stuff too. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to let go of things because, you know, like it's, everything's a security blanket. Everything that you bring through your life is a security blanket. And sometimes it's really okay just to let go. Yeah. yeah. I think your messages to the teens, like I know we had a conversation about that after you went to that school. I think that's just so important. And I think you spoke to the kids so appropriately. If people don't know, she explained her entire background. And you should go follow Ashley's story because it is an inspiring story to listen to. And I mean, like, I wouldn't be here without your encouragement. So I just... <laughs> Everybody needs that. I don't know what to say. That's so cute. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. To wrap this up, if you could offer a piece of advice to somebody who's currently unhappy in their life, so maybe they're studying something they don't want to be studying. Maybe they're stuck at a lab testing things and they don't want to be there anymore. Maybe they're, you know, the grocery store clerk. Like, who, you know, what could you say to somebody that truly feels like they're in a rut, can't see a way out, but wants to pursue some sort of passion? Like, you dropped everything this year to do that. Like, what took that? What fire could you ignite in somebody? I'm a little biased, but, and, I, and I've done it. I've given this advice out since even you gave me this advice out. Jump. That's, like, that's purely, that's the only advice I can give you is jump. I think that if you see any, if you don't see any ways to get out of yourself, you're not looking at every angle. If, if you need to take a leave of absence off of work, that's what I did. And I'm not saying that that's a huge thing for you to do. I don't know. But I think there's ways for you to get out of your scenario if you try. If you put your head through it, if you just walk away from something, sometimes that's all you need to do. Because it was believing in yourself too. When you're when you have nothing to get up and pull you back, you'll be surprised at how much you grow. And it kind of lights the fire under your own ass. It's like, oh my god, I'm responsible for paying my own bills. I'm responsible for making the money to pay those bills. Like if that's not coming in on a paycheck every two weeks anymore. Like that's something like it's a scary transition to make. But it is one that if you don't fully dive into it, I find a lot of people, even people that do things like part time, I do find have a hard time like fully going in and escalating their business to where they want to be. Oh, we got some from Emily. Emily says, I couldn't agree more. I've always kept thinking that I had my skills for a purpose. It's so I, true. Like, it's, it's, that's the thing. That's what I find so inspiring about you. And I find really weird about me. So like Gab's been painting since she was a kid. I've been building friggin' websites and taking photos and doing all that kind of stuff, blogging and everything. I just never, like, we always had the pieces, Gab. That's the, like, craziest part of it all to me is, like, they were always in front of us. They were always there. But we kind of, like, walked away or fell apart. And I don't even think it's from your passions. It was from yourself. Like, there's definitely a period of time where I felt like I lost myself. And I know you've gone through the exact same thing. So, like, it's so crazy how life can come around full circle. And that's something I try to encourage to, like, kids, too, is, like, hey, like, if you don't know what your passion is now, like, look back, like, 10 years ago. Like, what were you doing when you were, like, seven? Like, <laughs> what was fun for you then? Like, what, you know, what was it? Uh, anything, like, that gets your skill set up. It doesn't have to be academic. And if it is, that's phenomenal. Like, seriously. Yeah. But there are little kids that every day and – Thing every day or want to be on stage or want to do art or photography anything 
pick up a camera, pick up a paintbrush and do it. Try it. If you don't like it, try the next thing. And yeah. don't teach. Like I heard a stat recently and I think they say adults go through seven careers in their lifetime. I believe that. <laughs> like I believe that. And I think that it's important for you to go through a lot of those like smaller jobs or customer service or even go to university for a year or two. I think it's so important just to like what Emily said, you have your purpose, use them. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 100%. Oh, this has been so inspiring. <laughs> I appreciate you coming on. Tell us about your Christmas offering. Sell yourself to me, baby. Oh my goodness. There's just so much going on. <laughs> Um, December is a busy month for this gal. Um, so I had a launch about um, less than a month ago for paintings of houses in your special place, your happy spot. So the pictures that I have are phenomenal. I have cottages. I have parents' homes. I have um, their first homes. I have um, some landscapes that I'm doing. Same thing. Um, they have been just going phenomenal and they bring out a lot of happiness in me just to see those come alive. They're great. They're an easy thing to do for me to sit down, not easy, but easy thing for me to sit down at night after just long day of school, get through them. They're so fun. I will be sharing them hopefully soon. I know it's a Christmas gift for a lot of people. So I've been trying to keep a lot of stuff secret as much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a little challenging there. Um, but another offer that I am doing, this is recent, um, I am putting forward three prints for Christmas cards that Ashley took beautiful photos on, which are on my profile now, but I will be posting my prints later, uh, hopefully today. Um, the prints are coming through hopefully soon, like tomorrow or Tuesday. And then, yeah, I have a bunch of cards. Stay tuned. I will share my inventory that people can have, but they're super cute. There's a little, like, ornament that has like snowflakes in it those ones are my favorite I don't they're know very sweet like they're minimalistic they're cute just something different you know nobody wants a drugstore card anymore right mm -mm. I'm not spending five dollars for a Hallmark card anymore uh -uh. <laughs> tell me I mean, about your murals Gab if I was a local business owner with a bare wall how do I contact you and get that process going Yes. Um, if you need a logo, if you need your mascot on your wall, if you need just a shakeup of your entire situation, you can find me at Serotonin Artworks um, on Instagram. You can also email me at Gabrielle at SerotoninArtworks.ca. Um, all my information is on that profile. So yeah, contact me today. Get in contact this girl she is doing some incredible work especially during the winter months while your traffic might be down and stuff like that this is a great time to have her come in and really spice up your spot before the springtime so thank you gab for coming on thank you for being a lovely sister all these years and saying all the sweet things you did i appreciate you and yeah thanks for everyone who tuned in and emily for providing questions and commentary we love you thank you you supportive queen oh. <laughs> We're going to plan a girl's brunch sometime. <laughs> These drinks, like, literally next week. Two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> deal, deal. <laughs> January plans. <laughs> oh, two weeks, please. <laughs> um, tune in next Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to have another fabulous guest on. It's a toss-up between two people right now, so I'm not going to release who it is yet, but... Stay tuned for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. And thank you again for tuning in. The replay is going to be posted on this account here. And they're also going on YouTube if you want to watch the whole thing with. I know I put little fancy intros and outros on them. Yeah, it's pretty cute. You guys should go check that out. So <laughs> thank you and have a fantastic rest of your Sunday. <laughs> Bye, Gab. <laughs>